Welcome to another Monday and another edition of our painting tips. Each week we like to bring you some tips on oil painting, acrylic painting, water mixable painting, and uh, any general questions you have about art. And with me, to help me with these tough moments, is none other than, what was your name? Frank uh, Elvira Nugent. Is that a joke? Call me what you want. This is Joe Kaczynski. Joe, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? Well, Joe, as you know, your job is coming up with those questions and staying in touch with our customers. Have we any this week, or is it an early day? No early day. Sorry about that. I have one here from Victor from Bangor, Maine. Uh-huh. And it appears his wife has some real allergy problems, and he can't <laughs> use oils or water mixables, so... He was really looking all over the internet. His dream for her, which she's asked him to do, is paint a house. Mm -hmm. But he has not been able to find any instructions with acrylics to do that. So could you please help Victor out? Well, we certainly can. Uh, as we get ready to start doing this, I'll, I'll remind uh, Victor, is it? Yes. Uh, Victor, that we have an entire series on acrylic painting, and one of those uh, DVDs is totally devoted to cabins and buildings. And I think we also do a barn in that and a, a lighthouse, too. So we just kind of cover a spectrum of things. But you know something, Victor, I'd like to answer your question very much on how to do a basic house. Let's go up to our uh, photo just for a second to see what the elements are that comprise a basic house. Because you know something, if you've got the basic house done, then doing a more complex house is going to be fairly easy. So let's get started. This is what I consider the most basic house. Now we're not gonna worry about the white picket fence there, but we just have a very small front and it has a, uh, a tile roof up there and it has a chimney, it's got the walls here, there's one window on each side of the door. And this was about the most basic house I could find. Now there's one window on this side, one window on the back side, and actually on the rear, there's the rear door, and guess what, Joe, two more windows. Wow, who'd have thought it? And I think it has to be a, uh, 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 it's sitting on a yard, that actually takes three widths of the uh, lawnmower all the way around it. You would figure that point out. Yep, well, that's okay. You know, like we did this tip on painting willow trees a while back. Yep. And you know something, I had a tip fresh on my mind, but I got so excited about painting it. You know what I forgot to say? What did you forget to say, Daryl? Did you know that a willow tree drinks 80 gallons of water every day? Wow, no, I did not know that. That's why it doesn't survive much in the desert. Ah. So not only does a horse have no name in the desert, neither does any willow tree. I'm going to make like I really didn't hear that one, but that's okay. Okay, well, let's uh, go down to the palette just for a second. I like doing my basic um, paintings of houses with some flat brushes. Now the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and spray our paints. I like spraying my acrylics with just plain old water. And I use a fine mist water sprayer. The, one, the best one I've found is uh, made by a company called Chroma. And uh, you just go ahead and spray them. Now I use a wet palette setup which has paper towel there sitting on top of a paper palette. And this paper towel is soaked in water, it keeps the paints wet from underneath, and by spraying, you keep the uh, paints wet on top. And do you know why we have so much water surrounding the paints, Joe? I would have to say so they don't evaporate there. You know something, you've been doing your homework or paying attention, I'm not sure which, but I'm proud of you finally. <laughs> it's a rare moment indeed, people. Okay, see how I'm just loading up the paint? I'm using a small number six flat. Now this is a synthetic, so it works well. All right, let's go up to the canvas. Well, I've just got a flat canvas here with a blue background just so we can get started. The very first thing I like to do is just establish a line, okay, for the outer edge of my uh, wall. Now I want to show part of so let's go ahead 
and put this line here. This is the longest line, and that's the edge, and then the front of the house is going to be a little bit shorter than this side, okay, and shorter than this. Now, the reason is, is a perspective reason. You take any two points, and as they converge, somewhere in the distance, they're going to meet. So that being the case, I will up this way and down this way so that these two lines can converge. Simultaneously, these two lines will need to converge. And so that's how I get the basic structure of the house going. Now I'd like to have a roof, all right? And there's the center of the roof. And so again, we're going to have two different points, okay? Now this particular one is going to converge over here. So I'm going to have a shorter line on the same roof line. See that? And then all I have to do is draw the roof from here to there and from here down to there. And there's your basic house drawing that's put in. Now, the next thing to do is just put the base coat in, and we've got a nice start with the burn umber, so why don't we just go ahead and do that, Joe? You know something? I love it when a plan comes together. Alrighty. Unfortunately, I haven't seen one work that way here yet, but the day will come. Our day will come. What was the next line? And we'll have everything. Ah, when will that happen? Uh, the 12th of never. Ah, I've heard of that song too. Let's see, who sang that? Wasn't Johnny it Mathis. Uh, uh, Roger Miller? Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Now, was he a very big name singer? Oh, yeah. Did you ever sing with him? No. Nope. Okay. Never had the opportunity of. You didn't really sing with anybody famous, did you? Oh, no. No, Gene Martin was a no. Nobody knew him, Sinatra. Oh. Nobody really knew these people. I don't know who they Tyler are. Fitzgerald and Tony Francis. You think they would have enjoyed singing with me? Would you? Uh, I'm going to refrain from answering that question right at this particular moment. Why, Debbie Adams likes my singing. Uh, no comment. You see the abuse I take, folks? All this while I'm doing a nice job of painting these sides. All I'm doing here, okay, guys, is just going ahead and filling in the basic house. Okay, just like that. And when I get done, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint it. I mean, spray it with water so that it will stay nice and wet for the whole process. See that? So just go ahead and just fill it in good. Now eaves overhang on buildings quite a bit, so that's why I brought this out on that left side. Is that like a hangover? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's uh, a good way of, but it doesn't quite convey the meaning I'm looking for and striving to recover from your statement. If many of you are still recovering from his hangover, let me know. All righty, there we go. So that's the basic house. I think I'm going to darken this up a little bit. Now, we know that uh, acrylics dry a lot darker than when we put them on wet. All right, now, one of the things that I think we need to pay attention to uh, uh, is you'll see me with oils paint with a knife, and it's very fast and easy to work with. But here, I like using a brush. Why? Because I can get a lot of colors going with the uh, acrylics. Now, up here, we're going to put a little red, so let's go get a little red. And uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clean out my brush, okay? And then I'll go ahead and dry it. I'm just going to stick these back into the water. Now, because I'm going to use red, I'm going to use a light brown like this 
with a little touch of uh, white in it. Now this white is a gesso white and it uh, acts like medium as well. So, all right, there we go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's go on up here. And this becomes very simple. We'll go to a red roof later, but right now this is going to be pretty dark for red. So we'll just go ahead and get it going. And I want to make sure you can see all my strokes. Okay, there we are. See how nice that is looking? Now, just load up a little bit more of this red, which is a burnt sienna. That's a, a brown on the red side. Like raw sienna is brown on the yellow side. And so we've got the, uh, I think what we'll do is come right down here a little bit more. Yeah, that makes it look a lot better. You can make these corrections easy, and so you should. If something doesn't look in perspective, so that means I'll bring this down just like that and then color right over it. That's one of the nice things about using acrylics is you can easily change the entire color just like that. So now I've got my basic house going. Now you can have all kinds of uh, types of structures. It could be stucco. It could be um, uh, siding brick, stone, anything at this point. The main thing I'm going to do is just show you how to do one particular type of highlighting. And I'm going to get a little bit more of the white right here. Okay. And I'll get a little bit of this uh, light, light color. And I want this fairly thin. And now I'm going to change how I'm holding my brush. And in fact, what I'm going to do is go to a whiter brush. And that's because I want something that looks more like stucco. Okay? So I just go ahead and get a larger brush. I'll probably have to redo this a few times until I get it the lightness I want. And there we go. Just pull it straight down. You see, this is kind of like I did it with a knife in oil. But see that? Just pull it straight down. It's looking beautiful. All right, I'll go ahead and take a little bit more. Now, one of the things I like a lot about acrylics is I could do this with the burnt sienna, go in and do it a little bit of yellow ochre, and then go over it and highlight it a third time with something like red or blue. And I get all the colors coming through on the side of that house. I really like that, Joe. Okay, let's come right back up and see how I'm holding it. And then again, and then again, and there we are. So, and you could go over a couple of times. Now, what you need to do is make sure you're constantly spraying your building. Otherwise, it will dry on you. At first, I like to use the water, and the water keeps it wet. I use the Chroma Atler uh, acrylics quite a bit because that keeps the paint, paint wet. Because what happens with traditional acrylic paint is they start to evaporate and they form a skin over the paint on top of uh, uh, your piles of paint and on top of your uh, painting on the canvas. But what happens with their particular brand is it becomes tacky or sticky, if you will. And then it, during that stage, you can just reawaken it by spraying it with water. But it starts to go from tacky to skin. You can reopen it. And that's why it's called uh, unlocking formula with their unlocking formula. And just spray it and you're able to go again. Now with this, notice how I'm stroking on this side. I put it right here and then I come straight down. All right, let's show you that again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a little more of this white. I'm going to spray it. Now, I fight something you guys don't. I have um, a uh, studio lights here. Each of them about 1,500 watts, and we have eight of them. Make sure that we can see 
the painting at no matter what the angle is. So my paints really say, we want to dry, we want to dry. And I say, no, 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 don't dry. See how I'm just coming right up underneath the eaves and pulling that straight down. All right, go ahead, spray it a bit. Grab some more of that color. And then bring it back down. Try to go as straight as you can. I know, I'm not that straight. My, and you want one of these sides to be brighter than the other. And I want this side to be the brightest side. Okay, now, the next thing to do is to switch back to the smaller brush. And we're going to get a dark, dark color, about like black. And I like Payne's gray because that's black and French ultramarine blue. So not only is it a dark shadow, but at the same time, it is um, a cool dark. So we have an eave that's overhanging. So I'm going to go ahead and straight in. This is a weird angle, but I'm trying to make sure that you can see it. See that? And I'll just go ahead and put in that eave, that darken it right there. Woo! Starts to stand it out. Now there's going to be a cast shadow over here. So we'll come right up under there. See that? Just a thin, thin, thin cast shadow right across, just like that. Now we want to put in those three windows. Now you may say, what do I mean by three? Well, if you remember, we had a window right here that was on the left side of the door and one on the right. And then we had one in the back. And there it is. See, it's just the width of the brush. All right. Now, the fun part is doing the door. Okay, so we'll do the door. And the door was pretty big compared to the rest of the house. So that's easy enough to do. That becomes a double wide. All righty. Here's the next window, just like that. And you can go ahead and press your brush edge just to straighten and square this up. Okay. All righty. Why don't we let this dry and come back in a minute? Okay, I'm going to take our larger brush right now. And uh, we've let this dry for a couple of minutes. I want to take some of the uh, blue... Some of the brown, I want to make a nice earthy uh, color, touch of yellow just to make it go green. Maybe even a touch of green to make it really go green. Because I want to put some lawn on this. All right, there we go. And I could go ahead now and really start to set in my uh, house right in there. Just like that. So there you go. You can put a path in if you'd like. Most homes have some sort of a path that takes them from the uh, doorway over to wherever they're uh, exiting to the street, the uh, river, stuff like that. So let's just take a little bit of the white, a little bit of the brown here. And there you go, that makes a nice color. And we'll just do a side stroke, just like this, right from all right, there we go. Get a little bit wider as we come in. All righty. So I'll go ahead and get some dark brown and just lay that in again because it did not take. And there are always ways to skin the cat, so to speak, and then straight across. You have to go straight across to level your path out. So there we are. I don't know if you can see that very well. 
I'll take some of the lighter color again, some of the brown, so we have white and brown. Scoop it up good and very lightly just go ahead and put in your path, just like that. See that? That makes a nice path. And the key, of course, is going straight across to set it in. Now, the thing that I want to do next is darken up the windows. So, I'll put this brush down. We'll get our real soft brush. It's the same brush. It just happens to be clean, and I don't have to worry about the others. That's all. All right, there we go. Got some of the paint gray right in there. And let's come right in here and see how we can really darken up this uh, doorway right now. All right, so that's nice. That's like we want. And then we can just go ahead and darken up the rest of the windows. Well, Victor, I want to say thank you for a great question. And I'll also turn this to the rest of the audience out there and say, if you're working on a painting and you're stuck, you got a question, send us an email to daryl at darylcrow.com and we'll be happy to answer it. And we'll even send you a free gift. You go to darylcrow.com slash videos and you'll find out that we offer a free 60 day lesson on how to paint covering just about everything we do. If you're interested in acrylics, you can also visit our website at youcanpaintacrylics.com. I'm Daryl Crow, and this is Joe Kuczynski. And together, we know that each and every one of you, as long as you got to want to, you can learn to paint.